Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. My name is Deacon John Moore, a member of our deacons ministry here at Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church in Wilmington, Delaware. We're so thankful this morning that you have connected with us and worshiping with us today. Our motto here at Cornerstone is we love, we care, we share. It's a family affair. Our focus is grace and mercy. It simply means being open to the power of God working through us. Our pastor is Reverend Dr. Donald Dunnigan Sr. Pastor Dunnigan is not only our pastor, but he's the founder of this church. But what I admire most about him is his leadership ability, his outstanding leadership ability, his preaching ability, his teaching ability. Pastor Dunnigan has a gift of being able to, uh, to communicate and preach the Word of God in a way that's understandable from the oldest to the youngest among us. And so, if you have any young kids out there watching on YouTube or Facebook this morning or watching this service, we welcome them into our service this morning as well. And so, on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Donald Dunnigan, his wife, our First Lady, Regina Dunnigan. Happy birthday, Sister Regina. This week was her birthday, y'all. Our deacons, our trustees, and all the members of our church, we invite you into this worship service today to sing with us, to pray with us, to uh, shout with us, and to rejoice with us in the good news that God is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Thank you again for worshiping with us today here at Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, so we should rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to just open up your mouth and give him praise because he's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. We've come to wave our troubles bye-bye. Everything that is in our lives that opposes God's will for us, we've come to tell it bye-bye because we trust in Jehovah. Come on, everybody, open up your mouth and give him glory. Hallelujah. Here we go. Come on, Jehovah. Jehovah, you are. I trust, I trust, I trust in you, in you, oh Lord, oh Lord, Jehovah, Jehovah you, I trust, I trust in you, in you, come on, said I believe, I believe, I believe you, you. I trust, I trust in you, in you, oh Lord, oh Lord, Jehovah, Jehovah you, I trust, I trust in you, Come on, said I believe. I believe. You, I believe are, the you are the God of miracles. You are the God of wonders. You are the God of wonders. You are the God of powerful. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe.
Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him, I would fall. When I am sad, to him I go. No other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, he makes me glad. He's my friend. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day just to worship you. Another day, Lord, just to worship you, to lift up your holy name, to give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, because you're truly worthy to be praised. Lord, what would we do without you? Lord, you keep on blessing us day after day after day. Morning by morning, new mercies we see, Lord. Lord, this Sunday represents one full year that we here at Cornerstone have not been able to worship you in person. But Lord, what would we do without you? Lord, so many of our members, our family members we've lost during this past year, so many member of our church family members we've lost this year. Lord, and we, we miss them, Lord, and we're saddened by this. But Lord, what would we do without you? Lord, so many of us within our church family, so many of us are, are just hurting right now, Lord. We're just going through so much right now. We're struggling. We, we, some of us don't feel well in our bodies. Some of us are, we got members of our family in the hospital. Some of us have lost our job, can't pay our bills, got trouble in our home, don't know which way to turn. But Lord, we thank you that we still have you to fall on. We still have your word to lean on. Lord, we thank you for your word that tells us the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Lord, we thank you for your word that tell us that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Lord, we thank you for your word that tells us that, 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 that uh, you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, we thank you for being able to worship with us this morning. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Dunnigan. We pray, Lord, for him. We thank you, Lord, for giving him a word each and every Sunday to give to us 
and to impart to us to strengthen us. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen. get hard, we can sing the word of our lives. We thank you that you are our shepherd. You are with us always. And we are not alone. We are not alone. So many of us have been dealing with loneliness in this season where we have been isolated from so many people. So many of us are losing our loved ones. And that can become a lonely process. But because of the goodness of God, we're not alone. Not alone. We're not alone. God yeah, is right with you, us. He's your God. shepherd. Thank we thank shall you, not Lord. want. So even if you want some company, God will be right Hallelujah. there. He'll thank be right you, there. Lord. And thank so you, we can rejoice yeah. today Hallelujah. because we are not thank alone. You, Somebody ought to just move those hands and say, thank you, Lord, for not leaving me alone. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's see this. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me, I won't fear, I won't fear. Come on, say, I'm filled with anointing. I'm filled with anointing. My cup's overflowing. Yes, My cup's overflowing. Me. Thank you, Jesus. No, no weapon can harm me. I won't fear. I won't fear. Come on, lift that up towards heaven. Say,
Bible says, for he will send to us a comforter. Because we serve not a high priest that cannot be touched by the foot of our infirmities. So no matter what you've been going through, no matter how bad it's been hurting, God is there with you. You are not alone. He's your victory. He's your victory. He's your victory. Come on, one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am not alone. Psalm 23, the Lord walks along with us and we've got a a praise on our lips because we know that we are not alone. I want to welcome you to spring. Woohoo! It's spring again. We got a a shot in our arm. We have uh, stimulus money in the bank. Oh my God. We have uh, church under my feet. We're here worshiping the Lord where two or three are gathered. The Spirit of the Lord is with us. Got a roof over our head. We got food in our belly, a praise on our lips. It is just good to know that we can indeed say hallelujah. We are not alone. The Lord is with us. I want to welcome you once again to our worship here at Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church. We are so glad that you are with us. And I'm praying that the Spirit of the Lord will speak to our hearts, to your heart, as the word of God goes forth today. I pray that it will accomplish the purpose for which it is being sent. I want to also welcome you to spring. Today is the first day of spring, so we certainly praise God for a new season. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the reminder that we are not alone, that you go before us, that you are our defender behind us. And we pray that you would bless this word today, that it will strengthen the hearts of those who may be experiencing any kind of difficult time in their lives. We pray that you would use this word to be a source of strength and encouragement in the hearts of your people. We pray and ask these and all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to direct your attention to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 20. Gospel of Matthew chapter 20, and I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation I'm going to begin at verse 17, and I'm going to read down to the 23rd verse, the first portion of the 23rd verse. And it reads, as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the 12 disciples aside privately and told them what was going to happen to him. Listen, he said, we're going up to Jerusalem where the Son of Man will be betrayed to the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. They will sentence him to die. Then they will hand him over to the Romans to be mocked, flogged with a whip and crucified. But on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. Then the mother of James and John the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus with their sons, with her sons, and she knelt respectfully to ask a favor. What is your request, he asked. And she replied, in your kingdom, please let my two sons sit in places of honor next to you, one on your right and the other on your left. But Jesus answered by saying to them, You don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering I am about to drink? Oh, yes, they replied. We are able. And Jesus told them, 
you will indeed drink from my bitter cup. I want to share a quick story with you before I get into the message today. I was wanting some seafood, so I went to a seafood restaurant. And when I walked in, the host asked me if I wanted to be seated in the restaurant area or if I wanted to go to the bar, which was located in the back of the restaurant. But it had a big screen TV and the football game was on and there was no one sitting in the restaurant portion. And so I made the decision to go sit at the bar. I thought for a moment and I said, well, it makes sense to be back at the bar. So I got to the back where the bar was and there were there only three guys back there. This was a resort town and it was off season. So it wasn't a lot of people there. It was three guys sitting there. And as soon as I went to the bar, my hat became a topic for conversation because, of course, I was wearing an Eagles hat, and uh, they wanted to talk about my team, which in that year we weren't doing that good. But when I found out which team they had, their team wasn't doing much better either. But at any rate, we started was bantering back and forth, and these three guys were, were drinking. So the bartender gave me my menu, put a menu in front of me, and then he asked me, uh, what would I? What was I drinking? What would I like to drink? And um, I have to tell you, I don't frequent bars um, regularly, and so I hadn't really developed um, what you call bar etiquette as of yet. So I ordered what I always order, and I ordered water. And I was edit- sitting at a bar with these three guys who were drinking, and they heard me say water. That was like the worst day of my life. They asked me, where was I from? Who comes to the bar and drinks water? I said, well, what was I supposed to order? He said, get a drink. I said, well, I don't drink. So the one guy says, well, you know, I feel sorry for people who don't drink because when you wake up in the morning, that's as good as you're going to (laughs) feel all day. And and then the next guy that was uh, at the bar, he said, well, I drink. And then he says, this guy gets drunk, and he pointed to the third guy, and he said, he's a drunkard. And then the, the guy that he said was a drunkard said to me, he said, go on and order you something to drink, man. He said, this drink is on the house. And so I'm going to, from the, uh, it was called the Original Crab Cake Restaurant, or the Original Crab Cake Factory. And so from the Original Crab Cake Factory, And from Matthew chapter 20, verse 22 and 23, where Jesus says, can you drink the cup I am going to drink? They said, we can, they answered. And Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink from my cup. I want to use for a topic today, this drink is on the house. (laughs) This drink is on the house the house. Sometimes, you know, we get to choose the drinks that we want. We get to choose our own drink, like like Noah in Genesis chapter 9. But we have to be careful because when we choose our own drink, we don't always know what effect the drink will have on us. Or uh, like Moses in, in in Numbers, where Moses actually was instructed to speak to the rock, but he struck the rock and he chose his own drink. But the reason uh, for him striking the rock was out of anger. And as a result of getting the drink of choice, it caused him to forfeit the promise of actually walking into the promised land. And then we can't forget about King Asaharis, who actually was drunk and he called for his wife to come while he was drunk. But we remember that story where he not only lost his kingdom, he lost his wife. So sometimes a drink that you choose can cost you more than you are willing to pay for. But here's the key. The problem is rather we choose our own drink or not, we don't always know the potency of the mixture in the cup until after we have sipped from its contents. Let me say that again. We don't always know the potency of the mixture in the cup that we drink from, that we must drink from until after we have drunk from the cup. So this drink is on the house. 
Again, in Matthew chapter 20, verse 19 and 18 and 19, Jesus, he was talking to his disciples and he tells them, he says, listen, fellas, I want you to understand that something extremely traumatic is about to happen. The, I, I'm, I'm telling you about the tragic, about the awful, the excruciating and gut-wrenching experience you are about to witness and I am about to experience. And he wants them to understand how he's going to go to Jerusalem. And he said, I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to be tried. I'm going to be mocked. I'm going to be condemned. I'm going to be flogged. I'm going to be whipped. Going to be spat upon. I'm going to be lashed. And I'm ultimately going to die. Imagine what it was like for them to hear this. And not only was it difficult for them to hear it, but imagine what it must have felt like to know that this was going to be the cup from which you would have to drink. As difficult as it was for Jesus to endure all that he experienced and shared with his disciples that he was going to experience, Jesus decided that he must sip from the content of the cup because this drink was on the house. And not only does Jesus have to drink from his cup, but he tells his disciples in Matthew chapter 20, verse 23, that you will indeed drink from my cup. And so in this brief message that I have to share with you today, I'm trying to encourage those of you who have had to drink from the cup, the cup that's on the house, the, the cup of unnecessary suffering, the cup of distress, the cup of hardship that's been unfair. Those who have had to drink from that kind of cup. You know, I know, in this life, we all must experience some rain and some pain. But when you experience this kind of cup of suffering that Jesus is talking about, and he's not talking about a literal drink of alcohol, but he's talking about those experiences that we have to go through, those experiences that can make you angry, those experiences that can make you bitter. So maybe... You've had to drink from the cup of suffering. Maybe the cup of suffering like Naomi who lost her husband and she lost not only one son, but she lost both of her sons. And you know, when things like that happen, when things go wrong, we as humans, we ask the question, why? Why did this happen to me? Why did God allow me to leave my homeland, go to a foreign country, and then my husband dies, and then my sons become sick, and now I have neither of my sons to help me. All I have is two daughter-in-laws, and I can't care for them. Why does this happen? Sometimes when we ask the question why, we find a satisfactory reason to our suffering. Sometimes we find a satisfactory reason, a lesson a lesson that can be learned through our experiences, like Joseph, who had to drink from the cup of sibling rivalry. You know the story, how his brothers were jealous of him, and they ended up ultimately throwing him into a pit, and then they were going to leave him there to die, but then they saw a caravan coming along, and they sold him into slavery. And, And Joseph is just wondering, why am I going through this? He spent maybe 13 years in prison. Of course, it tells he was about 17 years old when he was sold into slavery, and he was 30 by the time he became a leader in Egypt. And so that was about 13 years that he spent in prison for a crime that he did not commit. That was not a drink that he chose, but the content of the drink made him angry and bitter and at the same time, grateful and blessed. As a matter of fact, we know this because he named his children Manasseh and the other one was Ephraim. The one Manasseh means that God has made me forget about my pain 
and my suffering. And the one Ephraim means that God has made me fruitful on the bookends going in. We don't understand why we must endure the pain and the suffering and the difficulties that life can sometimes bring us through the cup that we must drink from. But once you get on the other side, we're able to name it Ephraim sometimes because we understand that God had a reason and a purpose for our drink of the cup that we have to sip from. Sometimes people will spike your drink when you're not looking. And so Joseph came out of that experience saying, I know, my brothers, that you spiked my drink. You put some bitterness in my cup that I would not have ordinarily had to go through if you had not sold me into slavery, if I had not been falsely accused, if I hadn't had to go through the experiences that I had. But God meant it for good. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Naomi had a cup that she had to drink from, and she had some stuff in her cup that left her utterly confused and despondent. She ultimately lost hope when she went through her experience. You know what that is like? That is like when you are going to sleep and you have dreams about what your life is going to be like, which is Naomi. She understood that her life was going to be blessed. And yet she ended up going through all of the suffering of the loss of her husband and her children. You know, when, when you become so frustrated with your circumstances and you, you become impaired in your mental functioning where you don't even want to eat, you lose your appetite, you don't want to drink anything, you have no pleasure in food. It's difficult. You can't sleep at night. Your coping skills become weakened and damaged like David in Psalm 13. How long, oh Lord, do I have to go through this experience? How long will I have to drink my own tears for water and my tears become my meat because I have no appetite except for the suffering that I'm going through? Sometimes you want to turn to a substance or to something to try to alleviate the pain from the cup that you're drinking out of. It hit hard. Sometimes it hits you in your head and your head starts hate, hurting and spinning and you can't figure it out. Sometimes it hits you in your heart and your heart becomes angry and frustrated and closed. Sometimes it hits you in your mind and you become anxious. Sometimes it hits you in your palms and you can't seem to get a grip on life. Sometimes it hits you in your stomach and you're trying to figure out how to get the thing that you desire most and there's something in your way. Naomi was so despondent and discouraged because of the cup she had to drink from that she changed her name from beautiful to Myra, which means I'm bitter because God has dealt bitterly with me. My God, imagine having experiences like that that has left you feeling empty. And sometimes we get stuck in those places. And let's not forget about all those who are mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 39, where it says, all those who died in hope, they died in hope, yet none of them received all that God had promised. Not that God forgot about them. That's not the reason why they didn't receive it, but God didn't allow them to receive all that he had promised because he recognized that when you drink your cup, when you drink your cup that's on the house, you will recognize that there is a reason for God allowing us to go through those experiences. Well, here in the text, Jesus says, I've got to go through all of this. So Jesus was given the most potent drink in the bartender's arsenal. He had to drink the cup of sin. And we know that the wages of sin is death. And so Jesus had to bear the sin of the entire world. That was the cup that he had to drink. Did he want to? No, I see him in the garden praying, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He had to bear our sin. He was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised because of our iniquities. He was beaten beyond recognition because we had fallen short and missed the mark according to the will 
of God. The chastisement of our peace was on his back. The reason that we can have peace today is because Jesus was willing to drink from his cup. And so he went to the cross to die for your sin and my sin. He sipped from that cup. And Friday afternoon, the content of the cup knocked him out. On Saturday, he realized that the content of that cup had one hell of a punch. But I'm so glad that on Sunday morning, woo, he got up with all power in his hand. Why? Because he wanted to show us that sometimes when you drink from the cup, it might be anxiety going down. But when you get up and Sunday morning is coming, there will be another side to the the drink that you are drinking. When you get up, instead of having anxiety, you will have the assurance of knowing that there is nothing too hard for God, that he can bring you through. You may have to drink it down and it feels like a burden right now, but when God gets through with that experience of that cup that you've drunk, he's going to raise you up and you're going to be blessed. You're going to say, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come and I'm blessed when I go. You might have to drink from the cup and it might be discouragement right now, but when God gets through with you from drinking from that cup of discouragement, you're going to realize that God had a promise and a possibility and a blessing on the other side that you couldn't even begin to imagine. It will be so delightful knowing that, yes, I didn't think I was going to be able to make it through this situation, but God raised me up. He brought me out, and now I can say I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. Now I come to realize that, yes, I must drink from the cup like everyone else, and some of the contents in the cup is sweet and some of the contents in the cup is bitter. Some of the contents in the cup makes me happy. Some of the contents in the cup make me sad. Some of the contents in the cup is rain. Some of the content in the cup is sunshine. But through it all, I have learned that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. Jesus said, fellas, you're going to have to drink from this cup. I can't tell you that you're going to sit on the right or the left. But what I can assure you is that when God allows you to go through your experience, he won't put more on you than you are able to bear. Sometimes we ask for things and we don't always know the fullness of what it is that we are asking for. James and John, one on the left and one on the right, James and John. James died first of all of the disciples, and John died last of all of the disciples, one on the left and one on the right, letting us know that Jesus will be our alpha and our omega when we walk with him and we talk with him, and he tells us we are his own. Don't allow your cup to take you out. Learn what Jesus did. He fell on his knees. Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. You must drink from your cup. I must drink from my cup. But in the end, we know that we will emerge victorious through all that God allows us to go through. So be encouraged, my brother. Be encouraged, my sister, that God is not wasting this experience, but there is a lesson that he is inviting you to glean from the cup that you are drinking from. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for reminding us in your word through the example of your son, Jesus Christ, that we must all drink from our cup. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there is a cup for everyone, and there's a cup for me. There's a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me. 
God, I pray that you would give those who are wrestling right now, perhaps with some injustice, with some grief, some disappointment, some despair, some sadness, some anxiety that's in the cup that someone is drinking from. And yes, we do feel despondent and alone and lonely sometimes, but I pray that you would touch that person who feels that they are alone right now and let them know that you are watching their situation. You promised never to leave us nor to forsake us. Remind them, dear God, that you won't put more on them than they're able to bear. But with the cup they must drink from, the experiences they must experience, you will sustain them and supply them with sufficient grace. Thank you because you've done it for me. Thank you because you've done it for so many others. And thank you that you are doing it for those who are listening right now. We pray and ask these blessings upon all of your children. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to pause now and extend an invitation for those of you who may be listening today. Um, This is for those who may not have connected spiritually with Christ in a way that you've heard about. We share how that is done. The Word of God tells us that if we would confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that he has washed us and cleansed us from all of our sin, that we shall be saved. I want to let you know today that Jesus is still in the saving business, that the blood that he shed on Calvary way back 2,000 years ago is still potent today. It is still able to save. It is still able to wash away the sin that scars and stains our lives. But it is up to us to make the choice. We must choose to say yes. And so for those of you who want to say yes, I want to invite you to say a prayer with me. It's a simple prayer. And just pray and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Today, I invite you into my heart. God, I need you. I pray that you would touch my mind, touch my body, and most importantly, save my soul. I ask that you would do this in Jesus' name. Amen. See, when you pray a prayer like that, the Lord already knows your heart. He knows what you were thinking before you thought it. He knows what's in your heart, and he desires for you to experience the peace that passes all understanding so that you don't have to run from God anymore. You don't have to hide. You don't have to blame and critique and criticize other folks for not living up to what you think the standards are for a Christian to live up to. Forget all about that. You focus on your relationship with God. He will take you just as you are. You don't have to try to fix yourself up. You don't have to try to get rid of some sin or some activity that you're involved in or engaged in. He doesn't really, that's not what he wants. He wants you to trust him. That's what he wants. And he will then give you the strength that you need to overcome all of those other things. You seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of the other things that you will need, he will add unto you. If you'd like more information about how to walk by faith, give us a call at 302 762 9601. We would love to share with you about the tenets and the beliefs that we have that we believe will be a blessing to you as you walk by faith and not by sight. And then I want to extend an invitation for those who may be watching, and we certainly want to thank you for joining us today, but if you're watching and you're not connected to a church family, you don't have a church home, we want to extend an invitation for you to connect with us here at Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church in Wilmington, Delaware. Now, it's so simple to do that. You just, again, dial the number 302-762-9601. Or if you're watching and you want to put in the chat, you just say that I would like to be connected with Cornerstone. And there will be someone who will reach out to you by chat and, and guide you as to how you can become connected with Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church. You can do that physically once we are able to get back into the building. And But in the meantime, you can do that by connecting with us through our YouTube stream service. We would love to have you to be a part of our ministry. And so you can reach out to anyone in the chat now or simply dial the number again, 
1-800-273-0101, and someone will respond to your call. Make sure you leave us your, your name and your number, and we will respond to your call. We're going to prepare now for our tithes and offering, and uh, we, would, we have a tithing affirmation that we say here at Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church. Because the first tenth, one, because the first portion, one-tenth of our income already belongs to God, we bring our tithes to the church and present it unto the Lord in loving and cheerful obedience. And so if you want to support this ministry through your tithes and through your offerings, through your financial gifts or contributions, we certainly want to say thank you. And we can use that to help us continue extending the good news of Jesus Christ to every dimension of life. We want to say praise God for your gifts, and we pray that God will richly and continue to richly bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for each person who has contributed to this ministry financially and other ways as well through faithful stewardship of the gifts and the talents that they have to help us advance this ministry and the purpose that you've called us into existence. We say thank you. We pray blessings now upon those who are sharing their resources that we will continue to do what you've called us to do. And we pray that you will open up the windows of heaven as we trust you. Pour out blessings over families. Pour out blessings over health. Pour out blessings over every dimension of our lives and our communities so that the good news of Christ will be seen not only in the words that we speak, but also in the deeds that we do. We pray and ask these and all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to invite you to stay tuned for some upcoming activities. We had a vaccination event here at the church last week, and we're preparing to do another one in April, maybe two. Uh, we have just moved into the next phase, 1C, and we're exploring ways in which we can help to get our community vaccinated. We ultimately want to get all of our membership vaccinated so that we can be able to get back into the church and enjoy physically worshiping together once again. I'm excited about that possibility. So if you're interested in getting vaccinated, give us a call at 302-762-9601. As I say, we're in the works of planning another uh, vaccination event here coming up real soon. We're also looking forward to having an in-person Easter, live Easter worship service here on the grounds at Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church here located at 20 West Lee Boulevard. That event is scheduled to take place outdoors, so you will bring your own chairs. But we're excited about what God is going to do as we get together, when we all get together, not in glory, but when we all get together here at the church. What a day of rejoicing that will be. We pray that God will continue to richly bless you and keep you. Remember, this drink is on the house. God's got you. He's offering the drink and he's supplying you with the grace that you will need to get through whatever your experiences are. We praise God for you. Pray that he will continue to bless you and your families. And now unto him who was able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And all of God's children together said, Amen. God bless you and go in peace. I love you.